So we're factorizing and solving quadratics over C. This is a recap, which means I think you already know how to do this. It's a reminder. Let's go. So our first one here, z squared plus 16 equals 0, is a difference of two squares. And you might be looking at that plus saying that's not a minus. It's not a difference of two squares. But we can rewrite this as z squared minus 16i squared. I squared is negative 1, which makes that 16 times negative 1, negative 16. But then I put a negative here, which makes it equal to positive 16. And now that it's a difference of two squares, I can write it as a set of brackets like that. Uh, now, the square root of that would be uh, 4i. And of course, you can expand it to check that you're correct, but if you expand it, you'll end up back here, which can then be simplified as that. Now, after that, we can solve it using our null factor law, which says that this bracket must be equal to zero, or this bracket must be equal to zero. And if you rearrange it, you'll get z is equal to negative 4i, and z is equal to positive 4i. And there are my two solutions to z squared plus 16. Now, a very similar question here, and we can work in essentially the same way. First, I'll bring out a common factor of 2, uh, and I'm left with something that looks like that. And now I can express that as a difference of two squares as well, because, first of all, I can express it as negative 3i squared. Okay, so again, i squared is negative 1, which would make that negative 3, but then there's a negative there, which makes it positive 3. And I can then express that as a difference of two squares, z, z. Uh, and then that's going to be, you need to think about it a little bit. You need to root that, okay? So it's going to be uh, plus root 3i and negative root 3i. And of course, you can null factor law it after that that must be equal to zero, or that must be equal to zero. I'm going to jump through that and just say that z is equal to negative root 3i, or z is equal to positive root 3i. There are our two solutions to that one. Now, if you're faced with something like this that looks a little more like a traditional quadratic, you're going to have to do completing the square if you want to factorize it. So, it's going to be uh, z squared plus z, and then... I take this b value, which is the number 1, I halve it, which is a half, and then I square it, which is a quarter. And that's what I'm adding on here to complete the square. All right, and then I need to subtract it as well, otherwise my equation's not going to join up. So it's going to be a plus 3, that bit there, and then a minus a quarter on the end. Because I haven't materially changed it if I add a quarter and subtract a quarter. All right, that means that this section here now is going to be a perfect square. So I can express that as z um, plus one half, which is the half value of b, and that, that's always going to be the case there. All right, and then three minus a quarter, do a little bit of like fraction stuff, uh, either by writing it down or doing it in your head. Uh, that's going to be like 11 over four, and that's going to be equal to zero. Now, if we're being asked to factorize this before you solve it, we need to go one step further here and do what we did in the previous examples. So this bit here is a square number, that's fine. But then we need to express this as negative 11 over 4i uh, squared equals 0. Because now we've got a difference of two squares and we can express it in that way. So difference of two squares works by putting up a set of brackets like that and saying that they're equal to that. And now we have z plus a half, which is our first bracket here. And then we're adding the square root of that uh, i. And same here, z plus a half minus root 11 over 4. Don't go too far with your root i. Now, I suppose it's a little bit rude here to have our root over 4 and 4, because that could just be 2, so I'll just fix that up. So now that I'm here, I can solve it again using the null factor law, and I'll do this in full. I can say that z plus 1 half plus root 11 on 2i has to equal 0. 
And same here, z plus 1 half minus root 11 on 2i also must equal 0 if the whole thing is equal to 0. And then I just need to isolate z. So this one's going to be z uh, negative 1 half negative root 11 on 2i. And this one's going to be z equals uh, negative 1 half positive root 11 on 2i. So there are my two solutions there for our quadratic. Now it's important to note that if you weren't being asked to fully factorize like I've done here, and you were just being asked to solve, you don't have to pass through that step. You can instead branch off and work from here, right? Um, and we can just start rearranging and solving from that point. So we could say z plus 1 half squared equals positive 11 over 4 i squared, uh, and then we can square root both sides, so that'll be z plus 1 half root 11 over 4 i squared. Now, if you, what happens if you take the square root of i squared, you'll get i, uh, the square root of 11 over 4 is root 11 over 2. Alright, so that's going to look a little bit different, just like that, and then need to be a little bit careful here because there should be a plus and minus there, right? Because we're taking the square root of something, which means that there should be a plus or minus there. And we can finish off here by saying that z is equal to 1 half plus or minus root 11 on 2i. But of course, with a negative there. So z equals negative 1 half plus or minus root 11 on 2i, which is what we've gotten here. Negative 1 half minus, negative 1 half plus. All right, so um, fully factorized, but if you're trying to solve, you can skip that step and move on. That's factorizing and solving quadratics over C.